everybody and welcome back to Path to Platinum, the series where I show you guys how to get all trophies leading up to the only one that matters, the Platinum Trophy. Today we're going to be going over a brand new release with Doom Eternal, the highly anticipated sequel to the smash hit Doom which came out in 2016, and it's a pretty great game with a fun little trophy list that we're going to jump right into, but before we do that, I'm just going to get a couple things out of the way. First item. If you guys enjoy this video guide or it helps you out, then I'd really appreciate it if you left a like, subscribed, and went ahead and hit that notification bell. It would really help me out to help this channel grow and expand my fan base, and more importantly, help you guys get more guides. Next item! I livestream every week on both YouTube and Twitch where I chill with the fans and trophy hunt at my leisure and it's a fun time to just talk shop and have fun with and it's something I'm really looking to grow as well as so if you're interested I'd appreciate you stopping by just to check it out but if not then no worries to each their own. Now with the boring stuff out of the way let's jump straight into the guide and get you guys some trophies. Now the first trophy I want to talk about that you guys can start progress on as soon as the game starts is the trophy DARN IT THEY KEEP BREAKING which requires you to perform 33 unique glory kills in a single save slot. Now you get tutorialed on how to do this right at the start of the game but what the game doesn't really delve into specifics on is how to get different glory kills. The way you can manipulate this is by not only facing different sides of your enemy but also aiming your reticle at different limbs on your target. Both of these factors play a role in deciding which unique animation you'll get. Coming at your opponent from several different angles could enable you to get up to 4 or even 5 unique glory kill animations per enemy. Now there's about 5 or 6 different enemy types in the first level alone give or take, so if you're creative enough you could get this trophy very early on. I myself got this trophy about halfway into the first level, so that being said, start racking up those glory kills and you'll have your trophy in no time. Now as we continue on with the rest of the video, the main format this video is going to be following is to show you guys where each and every collectible in the game is that is relevant to at least one of the trophies on the trophy list. Um, I will only be showing things that are relevant to actually getting the trophy, so um, but I'm going to have all the collectibles in order in each and every level in the order that you happen upon them or find them. Now there is going to be a crap ton of collectibles in this game. Um, this video, as you can see from the thumbnail, that uh, the video is very, very long. This is actually my longest path to platinum yet because this game just has that many fucking collectibles and it takes up the vast majority of the video. Now, there are also some other trophies, like online trophies that we'll get into towards the end of the video. And as always, the way I do this with every single Path to Platinum video I make is that there is a timestamp navigation tool that I made myself in the description. So if there are any specific collectibles you want to jump to in a specific level, or if there's a specific trophy that you want to get to, and you want to jump straight to that part of the video, then go ahead and take a look at that description, and you'll find timestamps for each and everything that I included, so you're welcome for that. But this is going to be every single thing in the game, like I said, so we're going to be here quite a while, so strap in. Uh, but you know what? That's Doom Eternal, and speaking of Doom Eternal, I figure I might as well uh, fill some of the void of just watching the video with... Uh, some nice commentary, at least I hope it's nice, I'm trying, but uh, I'm going to talk a bit about my opinion on this game because uh, it actually wasn't at all what I was expecting. Actually, before I get into that, I'm going to talk about what we're seeing on screen right now, which is extra lives. Now, regarding the trophy to gather 20 extra lives in total, a few things I want to talk about that real quick. Uh, one is that you don't need to have all 20 extra lives on your person at one time. Uh, the trophy merely expects you to have collected 20 over the course of the game. Like I said, you don't have to be sitting on 20 and have the number in the top left corner say 20 extra lives. You don't need it to do that. You just have to have picked up 20 at some point, regardless of how many you have at the time. So, now that being said, there's a lot of extra lives throughout the game, um, but 
for the purposes of shortening this video as much as I possibly could, since there's already such a crap ton of stuff to get, I'm only showing the location of 20 extra lives, and once we've gathered 20 and gotten the trophy, um, I'm just gonna stop showing where the extra lives are, and you guys can find them on your own. Most of the extra lives in the game, I'd say probably like... 90% of them are pretty easy to find, and you can find them just through process of elimination. I didn't think they were that difficult anyway, as long as you have a, um, a good sense of exploration, you shouldn't have too much difficulty finding them. Uh, but there are some tricky ones, like particularly uh, the very last level in the game, all the extra lives on that level are... They were pretty sneaky. Um, but I managed to find most, if not every single extra life in the game. Uh, now, this was over the course of two playthroughs. You do actually have to play two full playthroughs of this game minimum in order to platinum, so uh, you will most likely be playing them back-to-back, because -back, I'm assuming you guys want the trophies ASAP, uh, just like me. But uh, yeah, I did play this game back-to-back, -back, and on my second playthrough, I actually found um, a, a handful of extra lives that I, that I actually missed in my first playthrough, and all of the footage you guys are seeing is from my first playthrough, not my second playthrough. So there are some extra lives that I actually missed, and I'm sure you guys will notice them throughout the video. Meaning, if you're if, if you got that sense of exploration like I was talking about earlier, then you should be able to nab the uh, trophy for getting 20 extra lives slightly sooner than I actually did. So. Feel free to do that at your own leisure, or just follow the guide and you'll get the trophy anyway, it doesn't matter. But like I said, I just want to stress that I'm only showing the location of 20 extra lives, and then I'm just going to stop showing where the extra lives are for the sake of keeping the video short, because you only need 20 for the trophy, so there's no point in me showing where all of them are. But um, that's the only collectible that I actually do that with, um, with every other collectible in the game. I showed where each and every one was and how to get them. Now, the funny thing about collectibles in this game, which is very different from the Doom 2016 uh, that came out a few years ago, um, in that game, there were no extra collectibles. If you missed even one thing, your ass wasn't getting the Platinum in your first playthrough. But uh, in this game, thank God the mission select doesn't glitch the levels and the trophies thank god for that because that was the case in the first game uh so you can actually mission select in this game and you can restart checkpoint as many times as you want which i will definitely be recommending uh more often than not to do so because you can exploit quite a few things in this game by by restarting checkpoint and by mission selecting uh that being said there are no missable trophies in this game you if you miss anything throughout the game um, you can just miss and select and go back and get whatever the fuck you miss. So, you never have to worry about missing shit at any point. If you do miss something, you can easily just look at where it is and go back and get it. So, there's no worries there. Again, it's not like the first game, because that was a huge issue in the first game. I don't know how many of you guys actually, uh, went for all the trophies in Doom 2016, but that was a major problem. You had to get everything in order and not miss a thing Otherwise, your ass had to worry about glitched trophies, and then you'd potentially have to delete your save data and fucking restart all over to get everything again from scratch. And that was a nightmare for people, and I read tons of posts about people bitching about it, and how uh, Bethesda just, for some reason, absolutely refused to patch the trophies for years. Um, I still, to this day, don't even know if they're still glitched. I went through my playthrough of Doom 2016 at the beginning of this year, just before Eternal came out, and I managed to get all the trophies and all the collectibles on my first playthrough, and I managed to platinum straight away with no problems, so that was pretty nice for me, but again, uh, to those unfortunate enough to have encountered the glitches, I don't know if they're still a thing, and if they are, heart definitely goes out to those people. But yes, like I said, in this game, this game includes quite a bit of extra collectibles, uh, shockingly, so they essentially made it so that, um, w with almost, not all the collectibles in the game, but almost all of them, there are extras that you can get in case you miss something. Like, for example, the, uh, Praetor suit tokens that you get from the, um, 
ghostly apparitions of the sentinels. Uh, they'll just be, like, holding their arms out and, like, handing it to you. We haven't seen one yet, but we will. There's a fucking ton of them in this game. But, uh, yeah, um, those, that particular collectible, there's probably, like, I think, if memory serves, there was, like, 15 extra in the game. Like, more than you need to max out your entire suit. Like, you can max out everything in your Praetor suit and, uh still have like 15 spare so if you do miss some stuff uh the game is pretty forgiving with a few of the collectibles there's there's some other collectibles too where that's the case um but uh yes oh and we're coming up to our first notable landmark in the first level uh once we go ahead and grab this codex i'm gonna have quite a bit to talk about uh particularly with the arachnatron that you see firing at me up ahead. Now, now that we're at this part, let's talk about weapon mods. Now, once you get to this particular spot, you should have enough points to fully upgrade your first weapon mod. I would rec highly recommend the Sticky Bomb Shotgun mod. As it turns out, this actually happens to be a great place to grind out the requirement for unlocking the weapon mastery for it. You see, there's this Arachnatron that I was talking about here, and he makes it pretty damn convenient to easily take a pot shot at, it, at his turret on his back without getting too much resistance from him. And not only that, but there's this one dickhead zombie nearby, but other than him, there are no enemies around to interrupt you. So you can go ahead and land a shot on him and then restart checkpoint, and you start right before the Arachnatron once again. This allows you to grind the mastery very quickly and I suggest that you take the opportunity to do so, given you need to master at least six weapon mods minimum in order to get the Gunpletionist Trophy, uh, which requires you to master every weapon wand in the game. However, later in the game, you start finding this new collectible called Mastery Tokens, which when used, they'll actually automatically complete a weapon mastery for you without you having to actually do the prerequisite. So, but unfortunately, there are only seven mastery tokens throughout the game, so you will have to manually grind out at least six of the weapon mods yourself. So, just be aware of that, and I would recommend doing the same weapons I did. I actually made it a point to... Um, speaking of the Slayer key here, I'm not actually going to show the Slayer gates because they take fucking forever, but when you do them, there's just a big optional fight, and uh, they're typically like way harder than anything in the level. So just be prepared for quite a big fight. But uh, anyways, yeah, the six weapon mods that I did manually throughout the game were um, all the ones that were relevant to completing a very specific task on a specific enemy. So all of the weapon mods that relate to a, killing a specific enemy in a certain way, those are all the ones that I did manually, and uh, then I just used the mastery tokens on all the rest. But uh, I will be showing really good spots to get those weapon masteries with the specific demons because there's a lot of really nice areas throughout the game where you'll checkpoint just before a specific enemy and then you'll have an opportunity to run up, do whatever it is you got to do to him and then just hit restart checkpoint and you'll more or less be right back in front of him. So you could just do it over and over and every time you hit restart checkpoint, these are the Praetor suit tokens I was talking about, by the way, but uh, every time you restart checkpoint, the game actually remembers all your progress and everything you did, so uh, that's what I was saying earlier, uh, which is very different from Doom 2016. Um, it's very good, nice to exploit that in this game, restarting checkpoint, to get shit, because it, w it was uh, risky to do it in the first game with all the glitches and shit, so... But, um, yeah, you can just have at it in this game. Uh, I have heard and read posts that apparently um, some of the trophies in this game are glitched as well. But I went through two full playthroughs and I didn't notice any glitches. Like, some people were saying Slayer Keys didn't spawn for them. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Here's the first mission challenge of the next level, Armored Rain. Uh, this is going to require you to burn at least four uh, demons at once. And as you can see, there's this giant mob of zombies here. So you can just easily get that right at the beginning of the level. There you go. But yeah, as I was saying, I didn't really run into any glitches in this game, thankfully. Um, because as a very hardcore trophy hunter, uh, being that myself, 
um, I can attest to how absolutely frustrating it is when you have to deal with a glitched trophy and that hasn't been patched uh, like mandatory or sometimes the developers just aren't very speedy about it because they don't really care. Um, more or less, I've never played an entire game where a trophy stayed glitched for the duration of the game's lifespan. I've never seen that before. Here's where you can get the next uh, mission challenge, Master of Turrets. This is an easy one, just requires you to get rid of a Arachnotron turret, which we're very familiar with by this point. If you went ahead and got the Sticky Bomb Weapon Mastery in the last level, like I recommended, so that'd be pretty easy. But uh, that was a good spot, or rather the first spot, that you actually encounter in Arachnotron, so that's where you can get that. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, it's, uh, I do know how frustrating it is to have a glitched trophy in the game, because that's definitely happened to me more than once, uh, throughout my trophy hunting career, so... I can attest to how absolutely painful it is, um, and my heart definitely goes out to the people who have to suffer with that, but, uh, hopefully, I pray that you guys all have a very easy cruise through this game, and hopefully everything works out perfectly well, as intended. Because um, this is a great game. Uh, Doom Eternal is fantastic. Although, um, actually, on that note, I want to talk about more about my opinion on this game, which I actually segued off of way earlier in the video when I was talking about the extra lives. Uh, I'll talk about it now, though. Better late than ever, right? Um, I actually liked Doom 2016 significantly more than this game. And I was actually... By the time I was nearing the end of this game's, like, my first playthrough on this game, I was starting to feel, like, pretty disappointed with Doom Eternal, and I was like, God damn, I, uh, I just didn't like it as much as Doom 2016. There are definitely some notable issues with this game, uh, versus Doom 2016. Like, like I said, I actually played my first playthrough of Doom 2016, uh, at the beginning of this year, back in January. And uh, it was a game that was on my backlog forever, and I always wanted to get around to it because I had heard just fantastic things. And I even watched this amazing speedrun. I can't remember uh, the name of the guy who did it, but it was at AGDQ, um, I believe, just at the end of last year, or maybe it was at the beginning of this year. I can't remember when it was, but I um, can't remember the dude's name either. Maybe I'll uh, give him a shout-out or something in the description or in the comments, but... That playthrough he did at AGDQ was fucking amazing. He did a 100% run in Doom 2016, and it was so fantastic, and I enjoyed it so much that that was actually what caused me to be like, you know what, like I had already planned on trying out Doom 2016 because I had heard such good things, but watching that playthrough pushed me to actually do it because I just thought the game looked so fucking fantastic. And I do love that about these games. Like, despite what I'm about to say about Doom Eternal and my problems with it, this is still an amazing game. I would still highly recommend it. And the same goes for Doom 2016. If you guys have not played these games, first of all, I don't know why the fuck you'd be watching the video if you didn't play them. Uh, but anyways, I they are games I would highly recommend to people. Here's the next Gunpletionist. I actually took up uh, Heat Blast. This was one of the f one of the two weapon mods that didn't actually require a specific task on a specific enemy, but uh, I figured this was a good spot to get this one out of the way. So what I liked to do was either throw a grenade at the first two uh, zombie gunmen here, whatever the hell they're called, um, and, or I would shoot a sticky bomb between them, and it would wound them just enough um, to lower their health enough to be killed by the heat blast. And as you can see, I would use the enemies behind to actually charge up the heat blast, because the way it works is the more you shoot an enemy, you build up a charge, and then you can fire it using the alternate fire. Um, and as long as you kill more than one enemy with the alternate fire, then you will... Uh, rank up progress towards the weapon mod mastery. So I figured that was a great spot to grind out that one. So I went ahead and did that. And uh, the uh, heat blaster, heat wave, or whatever it's called, that weapon mod is probably one of my favorite ones in the game. Um, and it was in the first game too. And I loved it so much in that game that I made sure to get it ASAP when I saw that it was uh, returning in this game. But uh, yeah, back to what I was talking about before. 
uh, with Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. These games are so good, and uh, like I said, I would highly recommend them to anyone, uh, who, especially fans of like old school shooters like Quake and Unreal Tournament and, and Time Splitters and stuff like that, uh, because I grew up with all those games and I loved them to death. And these games are some of the few modern day games that actually retain that magic and they keep that old school feel. And that's what makes these games so great. Uh, so I would highly recommend them to fans of old school shooters. But um, yeah, so that's again, that's not to say uh, that Doom Eternal is a bad game. This game's great. And I definitely enjoyed my time with it. However, at the same time, you know, I didn't get this same feeling that I had with Doom 2016. Like, when I f uh, f went through all of Doom 2016 and I platinumed it and finished it, I was like, right away, I was like, damn, I could see myself fucking coming back to this game someday just to do a for fun playthrough, like maybe on Ultra Nightmare or something, because I haven't uh, tried the hardest difficulty yet in that game. Um, but <laughs> when I finished this game, I was like, Hell fucking, I'm not looking forward to playing this game on fucking Ultra Fucking Nightmare, because, my god, uh, this game has some things about it that just make it way more of a rough road than the first game, and, uh, those were some of my issues with this game. For example, um, the Marauders alone, that, the introduction of the Marauder enemy in this game, holy crap, that enemy is not fucking around, he is no joke. And, uh, he's definitely the e- or, um, I was about to say easiest, what the fuck? Exact opposite of that, he is definitely the hardest enemy in the game. Uh, he's kind of even harder to deal with than some of the bosses in this game. Like, it's crazy how difficult that enemy is, and how much of a challenge he presents whenever you actually encounter one. Uh, they are not fun to fight. Like, I didn't learn how to properly fight a marauder until the end of my first playthrough, like at the very end, when I started running into the very last uh, Marauders. Oh, that's interesting, I fucked up on the extra life thing there. I didn't include the number. Uh, here's where you can get fire in the hole. This is the very first big gunfight in this level. There are tons of fodder enemies in this area, so it's very easy to get the multi-kills on the frag. So, um, I would recommend doing it in this room. Uh, I think it's a good spot as any. Just uh, have the fodder enemies group up, and it makes it very easy for you. But, um, yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, the Marauders, oh my god. Um, I didn't learn how to fight them until the very end of the game, and I really only like using either the Super Shotgun on them or the Ballista, because they're two of the hardest-hitting single-fire uh, single weapons. Uh, this is the location of the auto map in this level, and there's actually a mission challenge to do it, so there you go. That's where it is. Uh, these are, like, near impossible to miss, so th there's no fucking way you'll miss it. You have to walk right past it just to get to where you're going. But, uh, yeah, I found the, uh, the ballista or the super shotgun were the best things to use on the Marauder. Um, because you can only hit him when he goes to, uh, attack you with the melee hit. And that's the, literally the only way to fight him. And if you're on Ultra Nightmare and you're in a room with a Marauder who's also surrounded by a fuck ton of other enemies, like, good luck doing that. And that that just seemed like such a miserable time to me in my head when I tried visualizing how that would go if I were to actually play Ultra Nightmare. I don't know, maybe I'm just a bitch, but I think about that and it's like nightmare fuel, dude. It's like rage inducing just thinking about it. But, uh, who knows, maybe I'll come back to this game and try it out on Ultra Nightmare someday. Um, but I may not. So, I don't know. I, di I did not have the same feel, uh, as I did with Doom 2016. That game was so fucking fun. And I would gladly go back and play Ultra Nightmare on the first Doom because I loved it that much. And, uh, another big difference between these games, uh, that I noticed with Doom Eternal... And this was probably my number one gripe with the game, if not a close second, is that ammo in this game is so fucking scarce that it's crazy. And um, the chainsaw works. The chainsaw works the same in this game, but it's not as good as it was in the first game. And it does add some complications. Like, for example, because ammo is so fucking limited in this game. 
you need to use the chainsaw very often. Now, in the first game, the chainsaw was this, like, valuable commodity, and it was like, you didn't want to waste it. Like, if you saw a big-ass fucking, like, baron of hell running at you or something, or a really threatening enemy, you would look at that guy and be like, I do not want to fucking fight that guy properly. I'm just going to chainsaw his ass and move the fuck along. Uh, that was how it worked in the first game. Like, if you had enough fuel, you could just instant kill a really tough enemy. In this game, a lot of the tougher enemies can't even be chainsawed, unlike the first game. So that was a uh, big change. Meaning, the tougher enemies in this game, Doom Eternal is essentially saying, your ass has to fight them. You can't just cheese it with the chainsaw. You have to fight every single enemy, uh, you know, bare bones. Which kind of sucks, but um, I thought, like, I really think they should have kept the chainsaw the same. You should have been able to chainsaw whatever you want. Because uh, chainsaw fuel is still very scarce in this game. Damn, I really done goofed with the fucking extra lives. God damn it. I, I'm recording this audio, obviously, after the fact. Like, after uh, editing and putting all the clips together. And I'm noticing the fucking, like, I'll say, extra life three out of question mark. And it's like, fuck, how did I forget to switch that? That's crazy. I... I'm pretty sure that's the only fuck up in the video, so if you guys are noticing that, I apologize, and I am far too lazy to go back and fix it, because that would be a lot of work. Uh, and this video already has taken me days to complete, so I I guess I'm just not that professional. <laughs> maybe someday, maybe someday I'll be professional enough to go back and fix minor obscurities, but you guys have no idea how much work goes into these videos and how much time, how much of my free time that I willingly spend making these. It's it's a lot of work, which is why I once again would really appreciate if you guys showed support by liking the video, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, because like I said, a lot goes into these videos. Um, this is actually going to be the first time that you're coming to the Fortress of Doom, or actually, I don't, it might not be the first time. No, it's definitely not the first time. But, um, this is when you will first be able to gather collectibles in the Fortress of Doom, of which there are a handful. Uh, and you need Sentinel batteries to unlock them all, which is another collectible throughout the game that you can find in the levels. So, naturally, I'll, I've been showing where they all are, so no worries there. Um, and this codex, I think you actually could have grabbed this codex. Um, on your visit to the Fortress of Doom before right now, but uh, I only noticed it on this visit, so this is when I'm grabbing it. Regardless, better late than ever, it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as you gather everything in the Fortress of Doom before you go to Necroval, I believe the level's called. Um, because once you start that level, you don't get to go back to the Fortress of Doom, uh, and you have to play like four or five levels back to back straight uh, before you're allowed to go back. So just make sure you have everything by then. Uh, this is the next Gunpletionist that I went for. Uh, right at the beginning of this level, after the first big gunfight, you run into this Pinky, and it makes for a great opportunity to just kill him. And what's nice is after the big gunfight, you get checkpointed uh, right as the Pinky comes in. So you literally restart checkpoint, and there he is. He's right in front of you, and you can just grind out uh, not only the weapon mod for the full-auto shotgun which requires you to kill pinkies with it. But there's also a mission challenge in this level, which you're going to see coming up right up next, um, to get three unique glory kills on pinkies. And you can also use the same restart checkpoint exploit here on this same pinky to get it. Um, you're going to notice two of these glory kills almost look identical to each other. They almost look exactly the same. Like right there, I slit his throat in both glory kills. Um, and it looked, the animation looked almost identical. The only difference was I was, uh, facing different sides of his body. But they do count as different glory kills, and that is the case on some other enemies in the game. So, whenever you see me do that, if you think I just did the same one twice, that's not the case. I, it definitely counted as different glory kills, and it will for you too, as long as you're facing different sides of the enemy's body. So, just be aware of that. But, uh... Yeah, like I was saying earlier with my uh, thoughts on Doom Eternal, um, ammo was just such a big deal in this game. I was out of ammo almost constantly at the beginning of the game before I started grabbing all the 
sentinel crystals that give you the ammo upgrades. And even then, you still run out of ammo. Like, even when you get those upgrades, it's crazy. By the way, be careful when you grab this, because the pinky immediately pins your ass to the wall, and it makes it pretty hard to get out. So, uh, just remember that he's gonna show up there. But, uh... Yeah, fucking uh, ammo was just so tight in this game, and I, 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 I wasn't sure why. Um, so anyways, I, as I was saying about the chainsaw, and how in the first game, what I liked to do was save it for a big, tough enemy. But in this game, because you need ammo so often, I would always rather use my chainsaw on a literal fodder enemy, because A, um... You can't use the chainsaw on some of the bigger, badder enemies in this game. Uh, so it just it just begged the, uh, the question, you know, why even hoard my chainsaw fuel if I can't use all three charges on a big enemy like you could in the first game? So now what I'd rather do is just use each individual charge on a small enemy like an imp or a zombie. And, uh just get full ammo off of the one and then once i run out of ammo rinse and repeat do it again and uh that was how i played through this whole game but i preferred the way they did it in the first game and like i said i'm really not sure why they changed that that was uh pretty disappointing but um hey look i actually didn't fuck up the extra lives count number this time nice good job matt this video took so fucking long to make oh my god guys like from the moment Doom came out, which I got late, by the way, thanks to everything going on in the world right now. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it by name because I'll literally get demonetized if I say it. But I'm sure you guys are aware of what's going on. And because of that shit, it has set my entire schedule back. Literally everything I've been trying to do and everything that I've planned for has been ruined or delayed because of this shit. And I actually ended up getting Doom Eternal like. Almost a week after release, which really sucked, because I really wanted to get this video out right away, and as you can see, it's coming out uh, quite after the fact. Uh, we're already right through a couple weeks of April, so that really sucks. But uh, at least it's out, at least it's done, but um, you know, I had to play two playthroughs back-to-back, -back. I had to grind out all the online trophies back-to-back, -back and, uh, and then make the shit out of this video, which took fucking forever. And so a lot went into this, uh, literally lost sleep over it. Really hope you guys appreciate this video and enjoy it because my God, the work, <laughs> the work that went into it. But, um, and, you know, that being said with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, it's also going to delay everything else. Uh, for example, I had plans for Resident Evil 3, which you guys will see a video. If you guys subscribe to my channel and all that good stuff, you'll see future guides obviously and one of the future guides i have planned i want to do one for resident evil 3 which once i get the game i will do it's already out as i'm making this commentary but um because of everything that's going on i gotta get it so late so that really sucks but um yeah so and and that, you know why that is i i just love physical copies of games if i if i just bought digital copies of all my games this would never be a problem, and I would literally have everything right on time. Uh, but I'm a foolish collector. I'm all old school like that. I like having physical discs and being able to have all my games on display and shit. That still means something to me, alright? And the day when they get rid of physical copies, I'm going to be rolling in my figurative grave, and I'll be pissed, and I'll be spitting on the floor in utter disgust uh, with how how far we have fallen as as uh, as the human race but anyways uh getting a little getting a little sidetracked there uh with some passionate topics but we're gonna get straight back into the commentary of the video and um yeah doom eternal i just i just didn't like it as much as doom 2016 but uh it was still it was still a romp it was a it was a fun time getting all these trophies and shit and my god when i finally platinum this game whoo i was i was a happy camper uh because there was one trophy in particular and you guys are going to hear me talk about it later there's one fucking trophy in this game this get one godforsaken trophy um and it will literally gatekeep your ass if bethesda doesn't do something about it because there's this one trophy in this game you know what fuck it, i'm going to talk about it right now 
Um, can't remember what it's called, but the one to kill eight um, different player demons in the online as the Slayer using each of the different Slayer weapons, which there's eight of them, including the BFG, uh, which you can only get if the match goes to round four. So you have to win at least one round, which means you have to be good enough to win a round. And playing as the Slayer is a fucking nightmare in the online because the demons just have an absolute fucking advantage over him and it's not even funny. Like, uh, the balancing in the online is heavily catered to the demons. So if you want to actually play the online and have fun in this game, you're going to want to just play as the demons all the time because playing as the Slayer is a fucking nightmare. Unless you're actually good at the game. I'm not great at this game, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I definitely got better playing as the Slayer as I uh, put more time into it. This is a uh, Spectre, it's the invisible, invisible, really? Invisible uh, version of the Pinky. I don't know why I randomly decided to point that out, but I did, so you're welcome for that little tidbit of information. But uh, yeah, that fucking trophy, dude, oh my god. I was literally raging my ass off. You're, you're actually going to see footage in this video of me raging during the process of getting that trophy. Because uh, getting a kill on every, uh, with every Slayer weapon on enemy players, it's not easy. You have to actually be good at the game. And, uh, and winning around to get the BFG and like actually getting the last hit with it. Because that's the thing too. Let's say you get to round four and you get the BFG. And then you're just not good enough to last hit a player with it. And then you have to play another match and win another round and do it all over again. Just because you fucked it up. Alright, so here's a great spot to get the Gunpletionist uh, Weapon Mod Mastery for the Rocket Launcher. Which is the, uh, not the Proximity Rocket, but the Auto Lock one. Lock on Burst, that's what it's called. It's right fucking there, Matt. Read the text that you wrote. Are you kidding me? But, um... <laughs> Yeah, so this is a great spot to do this. It's right at the beginning of the level. You run into a pro uh, yeah, a prowler right away. And as soon as he spawns, you can see freeze him with the ice blast and uh, gives you free range to just lock onto him. Normally, it would be really hard to lock onto that enemy because he teleports everywhere, which I think is the whole point of why they wanted you to do that for the weapon mastery uh, because it's supposed to be like a challenge or something. I don't know what those are, but... Uh, yeah, so, if you just freeze them, it uh, annihilates the difficulty completely, so, just do that, just, and then, no worries, there's, uh, no difficulty, actually, if you do that, fun fact. I found the, um, the, uh, just the collectibles in general in this game were, like, way easier to find than they were in the first game. Here's where you can do the, um, you could begin progress on the... Mission challenge called wa Rocket Removal. You'll actually see a Revenant before the one you're seeing me fight right now. But this is the second one that you see in the level. And you have to get rid of four rockets. So if you have the um, Precision mod for the uh, Heavy Rifle, you could just snipe them off of his back. Uh, you could do the same thing with the Arachnotron tur turret. But um, yeah, this gun I'm using right here. Except the other mod for it. Um... Yeah, you could get that very quickly. Just every time you see a Revenant, just shoot the rockets off. You'll get it very easily. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um... The hell was I talking about? Yeah, the collectibles in this game were... I, I, I found a lot easier to find than they were in the first game. There were some pretty crazily hidden collectibles in the first game. Uh, but I find in this game they're far more obvious. Uh, there's definitely... Some tricky ones in this game, too, don't get me wrong, but, um, almost every single hidden collectible is hidden behind a breakable wall, and the breakable walls are, like, super fucking obvious. I don't think there was a single breakable wall in the first game, come to think of it. I don't remember any, or if, or if there was, I'm derping super hard, but, um, I don't think there was. And in this game, like I said, they're super obvious, like, once you see that crack in the wall, or wherever it is... Uh, you know straight away that there's something there. But, uh... Yeah. That just be the way it is. And now we've come to the point of the video where I've begun to draw blank and I'm running out of shit to talk about. It is hard doing fucking commentary like this, let me tell you. Making the commentary after the fact and 
filling the empty space of the video with commentary. I literally have to like always be talking about something and that that is a skill and props to all content creators who can who are actually good at that. Although who the fuck makes videos anymore? It's all about live streaming now. That's all people do. Hell, myself included. I'm guilty. I love live streaming. Uh and uh on that note, this would be a good time to uh plug myself a little bit. I live stream every week. So if you guys are interested in watching me just trophy hunt on the fly, uh there's the extra life by the way. That was my 20th one. But like I said, you could have that trophy sooner than then because there were actually some extra lives that I did miss. So just be uh just be aware of that. But I mean, you'll definitely get that trophy pretty quickly if you're going for all the extra lives that you see. Anyways, uh, back to me pl shamelessly plugging myself. Um, I live stream every week on both Twitch and YouTube, so if that sort of thing interests you, links in the description for my Twitch stream, um, or you could just subscribe on here and you'll likely see me stream here as well. But uh, yeah, I trophy hunt literally like all the time, even, even in my downtime, like when I'm not making these videos for particular games, I'm trophy hunting in other games or older games or games that were on my backlog. So, if that sort of thing interests you, if you want to come chill with me and the boys, and, and some girls too, uh, then it's a right good time. And you can, uh, you know, just test the waters a little bit, see how, see how it feels. Uh, but if it's not your thing, I definitely don't take offense, so... None taken, but uh, it would I would appreciate it if you gave it a chance, that's all I'm saying. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, oh, the actually really important note about this level. Um, for the other mission challenge, I, I haven't even shown progress on it yet, but um, you should have been working on it throughout this video. Uh, the mission challenge to... Uh, why did I say Praetor Suit Token? This is a mission challenge. What the fuck? I, put, I straight up put the wrong text. Um, yeah, that was supposed to say mission challenge to kill enemies with the energy shield explosion and there's only two enemies in this level who actually who you can do that with which are the um the soldier the possessed soldiers or whatever the hell they're called where they have the shield and the machine gun and then there's the carcass which will very obnoxiously just put up energy walls in front of you like literally to block your path um and they do it literally all the time in this game and it's very annoying uh, they are quite a frustrating, obnoxious enemy, and I hated them. They weren't in the first one, but they drove me crazy in this game. Just because it seemed like their life purpose was to just fucking annoy you. But, um... God damn it, I am so triggered and annoyed that I fucked up the text again. Like, that that was just how long and, and how much work went into this video and, and how long it took. Because seeing that me making those typos and mistakes and shit, it's like, god damn, dude. But I went ham. On this video that's for sure now here's the next weapon mod mastery that we're gonna be coming up to for the arbalist uh, which is to kill 20 cackle demons it's another demon specific weapon mod now this one is probably the only one out of all the weapon mods I did where I felt it was actually kind of sloppy and the reason for that is because as you can see um we haven't even come up to the Gacko Demon yet, but he's up ahead. And when you run into him, you know, I saw him and I was like, Oh, hey, it's just one Gacko Demon. Maybe I checkpointed not that long ago and I can just grind him out for the, uh, for the Weapon Mastery. But, um, yeah, you're going to see after I kill him here, the checkpoint is actually... It's not that far back, but it's pretty annoyingly far back as you're gonna see like you have to run past all those enemies again you have to go up the elevator and then you get to the cat demon like it's it's definitely not that optimal and i'm pretty sure that there's definitely i'm like 99.9% .9 sure that there's a better spot to grind this weapon mod uh because there's definitely other areas in the game where you see a single cat demon or maybe even multiple uh, just before a checkpoint or I mean just after a checkpoint rather But uh, this was where I decided to do it and again, it's not the greatest spot to do it But this was where I decided to do it um, This was definitely the longest one that, that it took to grind but 
If you can find a better spot, I definitely recommend doing it. Or if you want to get it out of the way now, you could use the same spot I did. But I just threw it in the video to show you guys, hey, that's the spot where you can do it. Because I thought it was so bizarre um, seeing that one Kako Demon in, in this level. Um, and there's hardly any in this level. But, uh, mind you, I actually, there were some earlier during the secret encounter. But the problem with the secret encounter is you can't farm it. Um, if you restart checkpoint, it'll stay completed if you complete it. Or if you don't complete it, it won't. But I think you won't get your ammo back and shit. So, it totally doesn't work out. But, here's the next secret encounter, speaking of which. And it can be fairly quickly done with the rocket launcher. So, there you go. That's how you do that one. Some of the uh, secret encounters in this game were a little tricky. But, um... Most, uh, if not all of them, you know, they wouldn't pose a problem if you decided to just cop out, for example, and use the BFG. Uh, we don't have it yet, but during the secret encounters later in the game, uh, there's definitely some h much harder ones. Uh, but the difficulty can pretty much be, you know, uh, annihilated just by using the... BFG. However, there is one secret encounter in the game where you actually have to fight a Marauder. And now I'm told that the BF you can apparently hit him with a BFG shot, but I've never done it. Um, the only time you would have to do it would be after you stun him. But you have to shoot that thing so fucking quick, and it has to be a direct hit. Um, if you don't land a direct hit, like he'll just block it. But uh, apparently you can do that. I've never seen it done. I don't know. Maybe when... Maybe when I get around to watching a uh, honest to God speedrun of this game, maybe then I'll see someone do it. Who knows? But uh, apparently it can be done. Supposedly, rumor has it. I hate that song, by the way. Um, <laughs> we don't want to get uh, copyright infringed, so shut the fuck up, Matt. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, actually, I think speaking of BFG, I think this is the level where you get it. Speaking of which, uh, and we're also going to get the Super Shotgun mod here. But before we do that, the next mission challenge, Disarmament, which requires you to de-arm uh, Mancubus, which is the big fat piece of shit enemy that you're going to see in a minute. Uh, and you can very easily do this same way as we did some of the previous uh, mission challenges already with the Precision mod on the... Heavy rifle, whatever you want to call it. Big bada boom, we're going straight up to the next mission challenge. Uh, this is after you have attained the wonderful, awesome, lovely BFG. And uh, immediately the game prompts you to want to use your weapon. That's typically how this game treats every single weapon in the game. Like as soon as they give you a big, awesome weapon, they'll be like, here, you can test it out for free. Uh, they do the same thing with the sword. But, um,. Yeah, as soon as you get the BFG, you could just fire a shot at all those Kako Demons. And I think if you restart checkpoint three times, that would be enough to get the mission challenge. So you could just keep restarting checkpoint until you get it. This secret encounter can fuck you over. And the reason for that is, all these enemies are straightforward as fuck. Like, they, they, it starts off and they're all running at you. And then I'm looking around for the last guy and I'm like, where the fuck is he? And the clock's ticking. And then this motherfucker just comes running out of nowhere. I have no idea where that gargoyle was. Um, but he's a piece of shit. And he almost fucked me. Uh, actually, on my second playthrough, he did fuck me. And I uh, ended up screwing up that secret encounter. So that was annoying. Just be aware that that gargoyle, he's there. He's just being sneaky. He's a sneaky motherfucker. But he's there. Trust me. Just look for him. Just fucking look for him. Shove your gun straight up his ass. You know what I'm saying? But, uh... There's the next rune. There's that. The runes are, like, interesting in this game. Because there's just the one that's infinitely better than all of them in every single way and if you don't pick it first you're insane <laughs> which is uh i forgot what it's called but it's the one where if a demon hits you and he would have killed you you survive the hit um that rune is fucking amazing and again i don't know who in the right mind wouldn't take that one first but uh that was just a a little random tidbit something i thought about when i was playing this game so there you go. 
sharing the info, and again, fill in the void, because we need more commentary. Um, we're coming up to where I grind the super shotgun. This is the spot I'm in now is actually a great place to do it, um, because there's a lot of fodder enemies around here. Now this uh, this secret encounter, it's at this point of the game, it can be rough. Um, because they throw quite a few enemies at you during this one. Um, I actually end up almost fucking it up, and then I just end up BFGing. But what's, what's nice about this one is you can exploit it pretty nicely. Because what I end up doing is, like, as you can see, I'm about to fuck up, and then I fire the BFG, and I get it at, like, the last fucking second. So I was like, yes, but I lost my BFG bullet, so it wasn't worth it. Um, however, if you just restart checkpoint, you get your BFG shot back, and the secret encounter stays completed. So, you get reimbursed, and you don't have to redo the fucking secret encounter, which is amazing. Now, here is the... What I like to do for the weapon mod mastery on the super shotgun. You start here, uh, this... You're gonna see me running this little circuit. Um, it's re It doesn't take that long, and I like doing it here because... There's just a ton of fodder enemies around here, like it's all really weak enemies that can more or less die in one hit. And I would just, yeah, as you can see, meat hook to each and every one of them individually. And uh, the weapon master for the super shotgun requires you to get a kill during the meat hook, like during the travel time. So while you're being pulled to your target, you need to kill him in that time uh, in order to get progress for the mastery. And as you can see, there's just a ton of weak enemies around here, making it very easy to rack up quite a few kills. I think I only had to restart checkpoint, like, probably like three, four times. So, I got a lot of progress there. But, uh, yeah. I thought it was a good spot. I mean, I like being able to grind these weapon mods in areas where you don't get a lot of resistance. Like, there's not a lot of... There's not, like, a fuck ton of crazy demons running around and, like, some of the harder ones. So, I say it's as good a spot as any, and I would highly recommend it. You know, Path of Least Resistance, you know what it's all about. Um, speaking of, speaking of Path of Least Resistance, there are no difficulty trophies in this game, which is a godsend. Because if you actually had to play through this game on Ultra Nightmare, God help us. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, you can get every single trophy in this game on the easiest difficulty, which... Now, I'm a bit of a de degenerate, but I'm not a total scumbag. I played probably 80% of my first playthrough on normal. And then I switched to the easiest difficulty once I got to, um... What's the level called? Uh... Takar Nabad or what something? I I'm probably butchered the hell out of that name, but yeah, once you get to that level, it's right after you kill the last um, hell priest, and then you and they, I think it's like the biggest level in the game. It's the first level where they introduce the mastery token collectible. But um, yeah, when I got to that level, I, I was like, holy fuck, shit's getting intense, and I had to lower the difficulty. <laughs> I, I probably didn't have to, but you reach that point where you're like, you're having fun to a degree, and then it gets to a point where like you'll have moments where the game's stressing you out more than you're having fun, and then you just cave. Like you cave under the pressure, and you're like, I don't want to lower the difficulty because there's my pride and my ego, but you could get the trophies so much easier if you just play on the easiest difficulty. So it's it's like. I, and I caved, I definitely caved, so... But, I mean, yeah, it's just too tempting not to do it. I mean, if they actually had have included a difficulty trophy, then that wouldn't have been the case, but... Um, and you could do the same thing in the first game, actually. There are no difficulty trophies in the first game, either, so... You can be a scumbag, piece-of-shit degenerate all you want in these games, and the game only rewards you for it, so... Feel free to have the casual gamer experience. Um, this is Sentinel Prime. Right, so the level I was talking about, where I lowered the difficulty, it's the one after this one, I'm pretty sure. But uh, this level is very short, and there's only... 
Every collectible in this level is a codex, and then there's one Praetor suit token, I believe. And then that's it. Um, so it's very straightforward. And like I said, this level's super short. You just pretty much walk around and listen to the lore of the game for like five minutes. And then you get to the boss, and then that's it. So it's pretty easy. And the boss fight was actually fun. I actually liked the boss in this level. But um, you know who I didn't like? The last boss in this game. Uh, I didn't hate him, but again, it's I'm playing through it, and I'm like, holy fuck, this must be a nightmare on the harder difficulties. <laughs> I don't actually know, because I didn't play it, but I, I would imagine that it's rough. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really curious to see a Ultra Nightmare run of this game. I really need to look one up at some point. A, a speed run, even better, would be more entertaining, because... Of course, you got those crazy people who just demolish video games and they'll fucking play a ga speed run a game on the hardest difficulty and make the game look like chicken shit. Um, gotta love those people. They just inspire. They just inspire creativity. But, uh, yeah, I really need to watch that because I'm so curious to see how pros deal with, um, like Marauders and shit. I would be interested. If I sound like I'm exhausted. It's because I am, and it's almost midnight right now as I'm recording this, and uh, there's still plenty more to be done. This is a long-ass fucking video, but hey, we're getting through it, and uh, this is the S Terrace Nabad. I don't remember what the hell I said, but I don't think it was that. I think I did butcher the name, but yeah, this level. I'm pretty sure this level is the longest level in the game. I think, maybe, maybe not. Definitely one of the longest, and also one of the most difficult. I just remembered another thing that I really hated about this game, and I'm going to talk about it because this level was where it made me want to rip my hair out. So there's this demon in this game called the Archivile, or Archvile, whatever the hell you want to call him, and he is a motherfucker because he, now, you would have already seen one. Uh, by this point of the game, but there are these things called totems, and the game tutorials you on them as soon as you see one, and they're like, hey, if you leave the totem fucking, if you don't go find it and destroy it, all the enemies are on steroids, and they're all fucking going at Mach 10 speed, running around, and they hit you for like double damage, and, and it's, in fights like this one I'm doing right now, um, well, actually, no, this is the secret encounter, but the fight that you have in this area is insane, um, because of the arc vial. Now, what the game doesn't tell you is that the arc vial is essentially a living totem. Like, normally the totem's just sitting somewhere and you gotta go fucking find it and then destroy it, but the arc vial, he's an actual enemy, and he can teleport wherever the fuck he wants, so at any time, if he if he wills it, he can just be like, fuck you, and teleport across the map, and then you gotta go find him again. So, uh, he's a nightmare, and he, and he has his firewall ability, which is super annoying, because he can just block literally all damage by doing it. So they made him a motherfucker to kill. And, uh, not only that, but he acts as a totem. As long as he's alive, all the enemies are fucking on steroids, just like they would be for a totem. And the game doesn't tutorial tutorial you on that um and that is like what the fuck i can't tell you how mad i got when i found out because what happened was i got to that fight right and i saw the arc vial but i wasn't very familiar with that enemy at that time and i didn't know that he acted like a totem so i'm literally running around the map for like 10 minutes getting my ass kicked by all these demons running up my ass on steroids. And, uh, I'm trying to find the fucking totem, and I'm like, where the fuck is there? And I couldn't find it. And, uh, eventually, I literally had to be like, okay, I'm now going on YouTube, I'm pulling up this part of the game, and I'm gonna see where the fucking totem is. And then I see the guy run up to the arc mile, kill it, and then I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. The game doesn't tell you that either. That is my biggest complaint. One of my most hated things. One of, one of the worst experiences I had playing through this game 
probably the worst actually uh, was that uh, that made me so angry that the game didn't tell you that arc vials act as totems that is bullshit because how long did I run around that fucking room getting my ass kicked uh, before I figured it out I didn't even figure it out I had to look it up uh, this is the next mission challenge to get three glory kills on um, pain elementals that's what this enemy's called and uh, this one can be a bit rough to get but thankfully this level is jam-packed with this enemy you have many opportunities to rack up kills on them but uh, it's always during a big fight that's the thing there's never an area where like kind of like the other mission challenges I showed there's no area in this level where just one pain elemental spawns right after a checkpoint so that you can grind them and then restart checkpoint. There's never a moment like that in this level. So, unfortunately, you have to get those glory kills when you see them. And if you don't, you fuck yourself and you'll have to replay the whole level. But, um, like I said, the level does have quite a lot of pain elementals. So... If you didn't get three unique glory kills by the end of the level, I'd be amazed. Uh, now, here we go with the... This is the first secret encounter that actually has a Marauder. Now, you might actually want to lower the difficulty for this secret encounter, because it can be rough. But, um, I highly recommend using the Ballista on this on the Marauder. I find it's... I find it's the best wep uh, weapon to use on the Marauder. I, I find it works the best. Because it's just one single fire, high damage. And that's all you want to do with the Marauder. Every time you have an opportunity to hit the Marauder, you want to deal as much damage as you possibly can um, before he uh, returns to neutral state, because then you won't be able to hit him again, which is annoying. And again, apparently, I, I read this online, but apparently you can land a BFG shot on him. I've never done it, never seen it, and quite frankly, I don't believe it until I see it. But I'm sure... When I won't get around to watching a speedrun of this game or something, I'll see someone do it and I'll be like, Damn, I wish I didn't say that in this video. But too late. Too late, Matt. You've already committed. And you gotta stick to your guns. That's, you know, you don't puss out. Be a man. Own up to your shit. But, um, moving on to more collectibles. History of the Sentinels, part 12. There's a lot of those throughout the game, as you can see. And there's more. That wasn't even the last one. Uh, so that's fun. But uh, you see how long this level is? Like I said, long as shit. Actually, I think you get the sword at the end of this level. Memory serves. I, I'm shocked that that's the same level that I was that we started with. It's This level's so long, I thought there were two different levels. But oh well. That's just how it be. There it is, another breakable wall. Boom! I didn't make the jump, so I had to do it again. And there you go. Quake 2. Rage. Rage! That's what I did a few times throughout this game. Only a few times, though. Most most of this game, 90% of it, I had fun. Especially because you could just, like I said, play on the easiest difficulty. But there were still moments where I got upset. And if you don't know me... If this is the if you're just discovering me through this video, then you don't know that about me. But I'm a rager, all right. I tend to get mad sometimes, but it's all in good fun, you know. I never let it affect my overall happiness. Uh, you know, as long as you as long as you're a healthy rager, then it's okay. But if you're a rager and you fucking like. Slam shit, break controllers, hit yourself, that type of shit. That's not good. You should probably talk to someone. But, uh... You gotta manage your rage levels. That's what I like to call it. Uh, and I've, I've gotten very good at this. I have honed my skills. My raging skills. You can channel that energy. You can funnel it to a healthy level. Trust me. I'm speaking from experience. It sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. Uh, hey, we finally get the Unmaker, so... Yeah, Terrace Nabod was the last level to have a Slayer Gate. And there are six Slayer Gates throughout the game. Each time you finish a Slayer Gate, you get the Empyrean Key. And there are six of them, and once you get all six, uh, you can go ahead and unlock this weapon, the Unmaker. And I would highly recommend getting it, because the Unmaker is fucking amazing. Also, there's a trophy to get it, so you kind of have to get it. 
but um, definitely get it is my point, all right, that I'm trying to make. Moral of the story, get the fucking unmake. Die by the sword, first mission challenge of this level. You could get it right at the beginning of the level. Just get three kills with the sword. No, that's actually two kills, sorry. But, um, yeah, as you can see, got it right at the start. Easy peasy. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could um, restart checkpoint if you wanted your sword charges back. I didn't do that, but um, I don't see why you couldn't. So you could definitely do that if you want to exploit it. But, uh... What was I talking about? I was talking about raging. And then I got to the mission challenge. I don't fucking remember. Oh, I was gonna talk... Right, that's right. So, once you... When I got the Unmaker at the Fortress of Doom, that's the last time that you end up at the Fortress of Doom until you beat the game. So, right now we're on the level Necroval. And, uh, by the way, this gate here, it's not open until after you do the big gunfight, so... Don't try and skip the fight and go up there, because the game will be closed. But anyways, um... Yeah, so this level's called Necro Necroval, I think? And, uh... Once you start this level, you cannot return to the Fortress of Doom until you beat the game, so... Just be aware of that, and that will mark your last opportunity to get any collectibles on the Fortress of Doom that you need. Here's the next mission challenge. As soon as you um, come up to these traps, you can get the mission challenge right away. As you can see, uh, within the first two traps, I killed enough enemies. So you can just do that right off the bat. That motherfucking Spectre amazingly didn't get crushed. That was amazing. Uh, and as you can see, we're starting to get mastery tokens, so you could start using those to complete more weapon mods at your leisure and earlier in the video i wanted to talk about it when it happened but i was busy talking about something else uh we have officially gathered enough praetor suit uh tokens by this point to have fully upgraded your suit so if you didn't miss any by this point you should have already had the trophy by now but um I'm still going to continue to show you guys where the extra tokens are in case you did miss any. But, um, so stay tuned for that if that interests you. But, uh, it's, it's literally just a courtesy. I don't, I don't, I could have treated that like the extra life trophy. Once I got 20, I stopped showing where they were. I could have did the same thing for the Praetor suit token. And you know what? When I look at this, uh, video's overall time, maybe I should have did that. Because this video's fucking long. But, uh... I didn't. It was a courtesy. I thought about it, and I was like, hey, that's a Marauder. He's running right at you, and it's really fucking scary. But once you've dealt with him, you can just come down here and get some really good shit. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I opted to uh, show you guys where they were anyway. The Evening Extra collectible. So, you're welcome, alright? You are fucking welcome. But, uh... Did that for you guys, just for you. <laughs> Special. I treat my fans with uh the greatest of respect. Yeah, you know that's how we do. So you come back here, and the gates open once you uh, pull that switch, and you activate the secret encounter. Now this secret encounter has a Baron of Hell, as you can see. He's one of the hardest enemies to kill in the game. But not when you got the Unmaker. Simply whip that shit out. Show him how big your dick is, and then let it rip. That's essentially what the Unmaker does. And you're lying to yourself if you don't agree with me. The Doom Hunt Mission Challenge. Perform a left side glory kill on the Doom Hunter. Now, very important, as you'll notice, I was actually on his right when I did the glory kill. The reason for that is because when the game tells you to do a left side glory kill on a demon, it means his left. And the game doesn't specify that, alright? That could be very confusing. That was the case in Doom 2016 as well. There were definitely mission challenges in that game that were like, hey, do this specific fucking glory kill. And, uh... And I'd, be, I'd keep trying to do it, and I'm like, why the fuck isn't this working? And then I realized... It's his left, not your left. God damn, game. You could have said something. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Hey, look, an extra life that wasn't part of the trophy, but I grabbed it anyway. So there's that. And you know what? If you needed that one to get the trophy, you're welcome. 
just did you a favor. Alright? I doubt that would ever be the case, but hey, if it was, like I said, you're fucking welcome. Now, when you start this one, it's just all pain elementals, so... Whip out your ballista, and once again, show them how big your dick is. That's how we do. The uh, I was using specifically the Arbalist mod there, which is um, specifically designed to deal with aerial enemies. It does, like, double damage on Caco Demons and uh, Pain Elementals. I imagine it does double damage on, like, enemies like the Gargoyles as well, but they don't really fly. And maybe Revenants, too, because, like... They have attacks where they fly, but they don't actually fly, so... But I'm wondering if you hit them with the Arbalist, if it would give you the damage multiplier because they're in the air. I wonder if that's how this game works. It's completely useless knowledge, but... Hey, I'd be interested. You know? Just for the fun fact. As you can see, I'm starting to use the Unmaker on almost every single <laughs> secret encounter. Because as you get towards the end of the game, the secret encounters get... Um, much harder, obviously. They start throwing way tougher enemies at you. Resurrect no more! You have to perform a... Left side? Yeah, left side glory kill on the arc file. So, go ahead and do that. And again, remember, it's his left, not yours. So just remember that. Very important. Um, and they also, they have another mission challenge in this level to do a back glory kill on a tyrant. And those mission challenges are no joke. Because those are two of the hardest enemies to kill in the game. But, uh... Fucking do it, though. If you want... Yo, shit! I think by this point, you don't even need to do mission challenges anymore. Because all you get out of them is Prey Sword... Eh. Prey Tor... Suto... Or wait, is that what you get from them? Uh... Fuck. I don't remember. It might be a different collectible that you get from the mission challenges. I don't remember. But, whatever it is, I don't think you really need them anymore. Because you probably have an, more than enough by this point. I genuinely don't remember, and that's pissing me off. I think it is Praetor Suit Tokens. I think. When we, when we see me do the back glory kill on the Tyrant, we'll know. We'll know for sure. If I done goofed. But until then... Oh, I think we're coming up to... Um, the third mission challenge. So the there's another mission challenge in this level to kill multiple enemies with a blood punch. And there's not a lot of places in this level where you can easily do that. Yeah, here we go. Punch by blood. So in order to rack up a blood punch, if you don't already know this by this point of the game, that would amaze me. But to rack up uh, or to charge up your blood punch, you have to land glory kills. Um on enemies and it'll charge up i was right you do get praetor suit tokens for doing mission challenges so ha have at you but yeah so you wouldn't need them anymore then you wouldn't need to do any of the mission challenges in this level technically because you should already have the trophy by this point but hey i'm showing you how to do them anyway so you're welcome in case you missed it there you go that's how you do it but um yeah, to charge up the blood punch, you just have to do glory kills on enemies, and then once you've done, like... I think you, I think you have to do, like, a minimum of three, maybe two glory kills. Then you'll have a blood punch ready. And, uh... You just do the regular melee attack, and it's just a very empowered version of the melee. And, uh... I would recommend just always using it when you see a lot of fodder in the room, because it usually one-shots them from full health. So... Oh, the mission challenges in this level are super easy. So, as soon as you get to the first big fight with these enemies, you can uh, use that precision mod like we've been doing in the past. And the second you shoot that first one, literally just restart checkpoint, do it five times, and boom! Then you got your Prey Sword. Prey... <laughs> prey... Mm! Can't say it. Prey Tor Suit Token. That you don't need. Um, here's how you do the next mission challenge. Uh, literally just kill enemies while being airborne. So I would just run up to fodder, jump, and shoot them in the face. It, uh, tended to be very effective, as you can see. But there's that one. Moving on. Hey, look! My good buddy Nath was watching me play. 
in the share play when I was recording this footage. Isn't that fun? Now you're famous, Naf. Hey, you're welcome. It's a fucking party. All right. So this is the second last level in the game. Um, and oh my god, I th so there's something that you can fuck up big on in this level, and I'm gonna warn you guys about it right now because I really don't want you to make the same mistake. So, there's a part in this level where, actually you would have already seen one of them by now, where you walk up to, like, the ledge of a cliff, and it'll be, like, all technological and shit, and as you walk up it, this big orange ring will appear, and if you jump through it, it, like, fires you across the map. You need to do it multiple times in this level just to get around, so you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, you definitely have to have seen it by now. Now, there's a part in this level where you are given two ways to go. You And there's two of these jump pads. So you can either go left or right when you get to this part. It's not yet. You haven't seen it yet. But there is a part where that's the case. Now, when you pick either one of these routes, doesn't matter which one, you need to make sure that you don't miss any collectibles during these paths because if you finish the path and get to the end and you miss the collectible you can't use the jump pad again to get back to that area the the jump pad will just be disabled so um you'll have to replay the entire level again from start to finish if you miss a collectible in one of those spots specifically with this level this level's a bitch that way uh and i actually hate that ended up happening to me and uh fun fact i was i this footage you're seeing that i recorded here this was me playing at like four in the morning uh because i had to redo the level because that's what happened to me i missed uh the last secret encounter in this level on one of the jump paths uh jump pad paths and uh i had to replay the whole level start to finish it was, it was Bullshit. All right, here we go. This is the jump pad I'm talking about, and I just looked at the one on the left. So th you can either go this way. This is the right path, and then you could you could have gone left as well. You need to get every th collectible on this route before you hit the next jump pad, um, because if you do, you can't come back here after that. So as you can see, here's the secret encounter. I had to come all the way. F I had to redo this entire level just for this motherfucking thing. Uh, thank you, game. For being such a fuck about it. And as you can see, last secret encounter in the game, so it's the hardest one. You have to fight the first boss. Again. You've already had to fight him multiple times throughout the game. But that time you're on a timer. And obviously you can just unmake him and make it pretty fucking easy. That's gonna be the last toy, as you can see. And here's the next jump pad route. So that was all the collectibles on that path. This is the left side now, so... Now you have to get everything on this route. And again, can't stress this enough. Don't fucking miss anything. Because if you do, you're fucked. So, you know. But, uh, you know, there is mission select. So, you can, well, even if you beat the level. Well, you would have to beat this level and then the next level. Because you can't go back to the Fortress of Doom until you beat the game. But once you do beat the game, you can just go to mission select, come back, and get it. Now, this is the final collectible in the game. Uh, this is the last level, Final Sin. And there's only one collectible in this level, which is one codex. And it's along the way to the boss, so it's very hard to miss it. Uh, that bitch is very funny, by the way. That hologram chick, she's hilarious. She says a lot of funny stuff throughout the game. She had me laughing. But that's all the collectibles. And the Gunpletionist, to master all weapon mods in a save slot... Uh, by now, you should have enough mastery tokens and have done enough manual masteries in order to get the trophy. So, boom, there it is. You should have it by now. If not, you done goofed. But uh, next up, Master of Fasting uh, is a trophy that requires you to complete a mission with only the famine mode cheat on. 
Now, once you've cleared your first playthrough, you will only have two trophies left that you can get from the campaign. The first one of which is called Master of Fasting, which requires you to beat a mission with only the Famine Mode cheat enabled. You can enable cheats from the Mission Select menu if you're wondering how to do that. Now, if you're wondering where to get Famine Mode, it's the same cheat that we grabbed back in Terrace Nabod. You can only get it once you reach that point of the game. So if you don't have the cheat and you're trying to get this trophy, then use the timestamp navigation tool in the description to go find where that cheat was and go pick it up for yourself. Now this probably goes without saying, but the easiest mission to achieve this on is Hell on Earth, which is the first level. The reason for this is because Famine Mode makes it so that enemies under no circumstance will drop health or armor. So the only way to get health and armor is from pickups. Now, there are no bosses or any overly difficult enemies in the first level, so this is pretty easily done. You can even play on the easy difficulty to make it easier. And then the last trophy you can get from Campaign is running up the high score, which requires you to beat Extra Live Mode with at least 10 extra lives on reserve. Uh, and this is pretty fucking easy. As you can see, I had 46 by the end. If you just play on the easiest difficulty, it is not hard at all. Just grab every extra life pickup that you find throughout the levels, and you will have way more than enough. As you can see, I did this on stream. Uh, this footage you're seeing is from one of my live streams, so, uh, if you're interested in ever watching me get trophies in real time, you can do that! There I am! So happy about my trophy! Look at me! <laughs> hey! But yeah, that's that one. And now we move on to the online portion. Now there are six trophies that you'll need that you can only get by playing online, and although they're all very straightforward, I imagine everybody's situation will vary slightly. Now, it's worth mentioning that every single online trophy can be boosted by inviting friends into a private lobby and have them essentially fulfill the trophy requirements for you, which is probably the most forgiving thing about these trophies, which is nice. However, if you're more like me and you tend to fly solo, then you may have a rough road ahead of you regarding one of these trophies in particular, and I'll talk more about that soon, but until then, let's get the easy ones out of the way. First up is going to be Mix and Match. I highly recommend going for this trophy first for a couple reasons, one being that starting your online crusade playing as demons is much more forgiving than playing as the slayer, so it's best to learn the demons first. Not to mention, this strategy goes hand in hand with the trophy, which requires you to select and play as all five demon types in the game. Now, you will have to actually play out the duration of a full match in order for the progress to count, so make sure you don't back out before the match is over. There's the Marauder the Revenant, the Pain Elemental, the Arc Vile, and lastly the Mancubus. Play as them all, and it's an easy trophy. Now, while playing as the demons, you're going to want to simultaneously work towards the next two trophies, which are going to be Fight Like Hell, as well as a Truce Between Demons. The first one requires you to simply deal an accumulative total of 5,000 damage while playing as demons. Now, you don't actually have to deal the 5k in a single game. Your overall damage will carry over towards your overall progress throughout each and every game you play. Once you've dealt a total of 5,000 damage, you'll have your trophy. This honestly won't take you very long, and whether you're doing good or bad, you'll get it eventually. The second trophy requires you to heal an accumulative total of 50,000 health overall while playing as demons. Now, this trophy will take a little longer to obtain than the first one, depending on how you spend your time in-game. However, if you want a very general guideline towards getting this quickly, I'd recommend playing as the Revenant. His default loadout comes with a healing ability, and his ability to fly out of very dangerous situations with ease allows you to fall back and heal whenever necessary. Another way to make this trophy go by quicker is to select all the perks related to health at the end of every round. There's one that makes it so that any damage the AI demons on the map deal to the Slayer will heal a portion of the damage dealt to your health. There's another that grants you an instant cast team heal for you and your teammate as well, which will rack up the overall heal amount rather quickly. It should go without saying, but you don't have to heal the 50,000 health within a single game. The game tallies your total amounts and keeps track over all your games. Keep a close eye on your health bar during matches and you'll have this trophy in no time. Now, the trophies Man vs. Monsters as well as Bloodbath are very straightforward and don't require much at all of an explanation. 
The only thing I'll say about the latter is that it's much, much faster as well as more effective to get 200 kills as the Slayer rather than the Demons, especially if you're playing by yourself. Not to mention, if you are playing as the demons, your teammates' kills don't count towards your total, so they could potentially steal kills that would otherwise be contributing to your overall progress. The last trophy I'm going to talk about could potentially gatekeep you away from your platinum, and that one's going to be Weapons Expert. Now, this trophy won't cause an issue at all if you're boosting it with your friends, however, if you're by yourself, you might have a great deal of difficulty depending on multiple factors. First one being, depending on when you're attempting to get this, the player base for the game might be down to a skeleton crew of players that are dedicated to the game. This usually means that all the beginners have moved on and only the talented players remain, making this trophy extremely difficult to obtain in hindsight. For this trophy, you'll have to kill at least one player demon with all eight of the Slayer's weapons each. This list is as follows. The shotgun, the heavy cannon, the plasma rifle, the rocket launcher, the super shotgun, the ballista, the chain gun, and lastly the BFG. Now the Slayer begins every match with access to all these weapons right from the start with the exception of the BFG. Now the BFG is what makes this trophy so complicated. The reason for this is because you only have access to the BFG through a perk that can only be offered to you by the end of the fourth round. This means that you'll have to win at least one round minimum against the demons just to have a chance at obtaining the BFG, and once you get it, you actually have to be good enough to get a kill with it. This can be easier said than done, especially if you're not being matched with beginners for opponents. You see, if you're not really good at playing as the Slayer, this could prove to be a very difficult trophy due to the fact that the battle mode seems to be very tailored to the demons. This could change in the future with balance patches or updates to the online, however, as for right now, this is prime time to get your trophy, so I wouldn't wait to get this before it becomes too difficult to get. Lastly, I'd like to mention that the game may track your progress for how many kills you have, however, they don't tell you which weapons you got a kill with, so you'll have to keep track of that yourself, lest you want to get a kill with all of them all over again. Regardless, I wish you guys the best of luck with this trophy, as it's easily the one that will make or break your platinum. And that is going to be every single trophy in Doom Eternal. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and go ahead and hit that notification bell for more guides on upcoming games in the future. However, if you want to stick around, I usually tend to rate the difficulty level of a platinum after I've played it. So with that being said... I'm going to go ahead and give Doom Eternal a solid 5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. Honestly, I think Doom Eternal is an extremely easy platinum overall, especially when it comes to the campaign. However, the Weapons Expert trophy alone could make getting the platinum quite a chore and a miserable one at that, depending on your situation. I think that trophy alone justifies my rating, and if you can manage to get that trophy, then the rest of the trophy list is as good as got. And with that being said, that's all there is. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and I will definitely see you in the next one. So take care.